Hi, thank you for buying the Axiom computer speaker. I'm sure that now that you've received them, you're excited to get everything hooked up, but unlike a conventional pair of speakers where you simply connect the speaker terminals to an amplifier or receiver, there's a little bit more going on with this system and the configuration that's required to get it working on your computer. So I thought today we'd just go over some of those things and some of the parts. If we look here, we've got an M2-based Axiom computer speaker, and we can see here the rear function panel. Now one of the things that I'll note is that the other speaker in the pair that you received will not have this plate. It will simply have a standard pair of binding post speaker terminals. That speaker, the passive speaker, has no electronics in it, and it is the right channel. You'll note here that the binding post to connect to that right speaker mentions that it's to the right speaker here. By default, the speaker that has the electronics in it is the left channel. So I'm going to go through some of the connections that are available on the back panel, and then we'll look at how all of them operate. So we've already mentioned the speaker terminal outputs for the right channel. Here we have an RCA output marked sub out. If you have a subwoofer that you want to use for the system or you've purchased the optional EP100 subwoofer that goes with this, simply connect an RCA cable to the line input RCA on your subwoofer. The volume control for initially setting the level of the subwoofer needs to be done using the input for the level on the subwoofer. The master volume, which is here, will then control the level of both the speakers and the subwoofer. We have over on this side the DC input jack. It takes a 15 volt power supply, which you'll find in the box with the speakers. And then over here, above the volume control, we have a 3.5 millimeter analog line-in jack. That's a stereo jack like you'll find as a headphone jack on an iPod or a, something of that nature. Above that is a USB input jack. It's a type B jack. Then we have a power indicator LED. And finally this white button is actually the power switch. So now I'll go through a couple of options of how you might be connecting the system up. First of all, Inside the box, you'll have a power supply brick. Included with that is an AC cable to connect the brick. And on the other end is a barrel jack that plugs into the power jack on the input to the speaker. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, we mentioned that there's a 3.5 millimeter analog jack, which you might want to use for connecting your phone, your iPod, a tablet or something to just quickly play music directly into the system. And by plugging something into that jack, there is a built-in switch. So one of the things to keep in mind is that when something is plugged into that jack, the USB input from the computer is disabled. The computer will still recognize the speaker, and you can play to it, but you won't get any sound from the computer if you have that jack plugged in. So just remember that if you're going to be playing uh, music sources from the computer via the USB connection, that that should be unplugged. Next, we have the USB cable that comes with the speaker. It has a standard uh, type A USB connection to plug into the computer side and it has a type B connector on the other end and that simply plugs into the jack that's on the back of the speaker, like that. Now, one of the other things that I want to mention is the switch to control the power. It's a little bit different than a, a rocker switch or a normal power switch that is directly in line with the, with the power. This is actually a software switch. So, to turn the system on, it's very simple. You press the white button, the blue LED lights up, and now the system is powered up. To turn it off, if you quickly press the button, nothing will happen. To turn it off properly, you need to hold the button down for a couple of seconds until the blue light goes out. So those are the basic connections. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect the speaker via USB to 
a Windows 7 laptop and we're going to look at the initial install. Later on in this video we're going to be showing a number of different operating systems. One of the nice things about the Axiom computer speakers is that they are a USB 1.1 class device which means that you don't have to install any special software or any special drivers. All Windows and Macintosh operating systems will recognize the speaker instantly. So there's really very little that you need to do on your part other than adjusting volume levels. So now we'll go ahead and we'll turn it on. And we see that an icon has popped up here that it's found a device called USB Audio DAC. And now that's, that speaker is set up to play from the computer. First, for installation on a Windows 7 computer, plug in the Axiom computer speaker USB connector, one both to the speaker side and then one to your computer. You're going to now power up the Axiom computer speaker and you will notice an icon will appear at the bottom right of your screen saying that it's installing device driver software. After that's completed in a few seconds, you will see USB audio DAC appear. This is the Axiom computer speaker. Next, you'll want to go to your speaker icon, right click and select playback devices. Make sure that there's a green check mark next to the USB audio device. If it is not, you'll have to go down to the set default button and press that. Now there's a green check mark that's appeared showing that it is set as the default audio device. We're going to now go to a, an audio streaming program and we're going to open the volume control mixer which we can find by right clicking on the speaker icon on your desktop. Note that there will be a slider that will show up for each of the applications to adjust the relative level. Under device is your master volume control which will not work. It's a software volume control and will not impact the level of the DAC. You need to use the individual sliders. Now we're going to look at installation on a machine running Windows 8.1. You'll note that if you hover over your speaker icon in the bottom right of the screen, you will see uh, your internal sound card speakers. In this case, we have them muted. Now you'll want to plug in the USB cable from your Axiom computer speaker and power on the Axiom computer speaker. As soon as that happens, Windows will detect the device and your icon will now show speakers with USB in brackets. If we go to playback devices, we'll see a USB audio DAC and a green check mark. That DAC is the Axiom computer speaker. And you can see here by going into properties that it's set to use that audio device, which is what we want. Next, we'll open a browser where we've got a streaming music service open and we'll play a track. Uh, the volume control on the bottom right here will affect the volume level and would be the same for iTunes or any music library software. If we go into our volume mixer by right clicking on the speaker icon, we'll now see a slider for each of the applications running, system sounds in this case and our streaming software. Note that the device speaker volume control on the left, which is also the master volume control, will not actually control anything to do with the volume level of the Axiom computer speaker. This is because the DAC is running full bitrate and we're not going to use the Windows software volume control that would compromise fidelity. In our final example, we'll be installing the Axiom computer speaker on a Macintosh running OS X. So, first thing you want to do is plug the Axiom computer speaker USB connector into your Mac. 
and then we're going to open system preferences and we'll open the sound settings. Once that's been done, you can now turn on the Axiom computer speaker and you will see a USB audio DAC show up in your sound browser. That is the Axiom computer speaker. Note that the output volume slider will not actually control the volume. You need to control the volume level in every application that you want to be uh, playing audio from. In this case, we're, we're showing a streaming music service and the volume icon slider at the bottom right will adjust the volume. This will be the same for any devices, any audio applications such as iTunes that you're using on your Mac. So thanks for watching this online video manual on the Axiom computer speakers. Thank you for your purchase. I hope you really enjoy them. We had a lot of fun designing and building this product. Thank you.